Hello and welcome to the Christmas show of Alzu. Today with me I have Simon King from San Jose. Hi Simon. Merry Christmas. And Anthony Orr from Houston, Texas. How are you doing down there, my friend? Now, today we are going to take the time to look back at 2013 and uh, Simon and Anthony, who are a uh, keen observer of what's happening around us, both in IT and, and, and organizational and business things and other small little things that we never think about, going to share what they thought were their highlights of 2013. And then to finish up, they're going to talk about predictions. What's going to happen to them 14? What's going to happen next year? So, Anthony, by the way, you're sitting down there. This is obviously your beautiful Christmas home that we see in the background there. Is it warm? What's the temperature down in Houston right now? Uh, I think it's in the 70s today, if I'm correct. Uh, this, is really <laughs> this is ridiculous. So tell me, what have, what have excited you this year in IT? Well, what's exciting me this year in IT is uh, all the conversations around the Internet of Things and how things are starting to be interconnected to, to help people. And uh, we used to mainly just think about uh, the Internet uh, of, of Things as it relates to corporate America, if you, if you look at it that way. Now that it's becoming more personal, I, I think uh, uh, those things are going to accelerate some and more organizations are going to try to uh, bring more value uh, into the home, into people's personal lives with the way connectivity is going to work in the future. Cool. How about you, Simon? What jumps to the front? Well, for, for me, for, first of all, it, it is fairly warm here in San Jose. Thank you for asking. <laughs> but uh, no, I went out to uh, Chicago about a week and a half ago, and it was minus one Fahrenheit, and that was very cold. So for that reason, I was extremely grateful for Uber. Uber is a great service where with really easy to use UI, you can find a car close to you, request them, come pick you up. They'll take you where you want to go, and you just get a, a receipt in the in the in your mail, which with the Christmas season upon us is a godsend and safe. Is is Uber safe or do they just scam you every time? No, I'm, they're, they're fantastic. We use them all the time. We go out to friends uh, with the kids, and you get a much higher level of driver than you do in, in normal cars. The vehicles are new and well-maintained. It's awesome. See, here in the mountains, uh, we don't have that much Uber. It's uh, each man mm -hmm. for himself and his own snow, snow plow. Yeah, Simon, I, I agree with you, too, because it's not here in Houston yet, but I tried it. In Chicago, I didn't even know that was being tried because it was on someone else's phone. And well, then when I was recently out at Dreamforce, I tried it, and oh, that was just wonderful. Experience. Yeah, it's it's in and Bangalore. It's in Bangalore. I was in Oslo, uh, and I have a friend actually who lives up in the Marina District in San Francisco, and she said it's normally really difficult at the weekends to get out and about without a car. And she said it's actually been a life changer for her because she can predictably get a car and safely get out and back to our house, which before was really hard. So for her, it's actually been life-changing. Interesting. That's very interesting. Uh, so you've used it in Bangalore? Yes. Wow. What, isn't traffic as disastrous there as it is? And what would you do if you didn't have Uber? Uh, how would that go down? You would have to... Yeah, no, no, normally you have to book a car, and so then you're very much you know, kind of waiting on the car service and, and all this sort of thing. But, um, you know... Bangalore traffic aside, you know, I'm really all about speed. I actually, you know, have a sports car myself as well at home. So the other thing that was really fantastic this summer was, you know, again up in San Francisco, the America's Cup sailboat racing. I, I went up and spent a number hey, of days hey, up there watching. Hey, 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 hey! I mentioned this before. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, a Ki I'm a Kiwi citizen. I'm married to New Zealand. We're not talking about America's Cup. No, we're talk talking. Yes. We're talking about big data. We're talking about the amount of data they collected off the boat that they used to continuously improve the, the speed and performance of the boat. I mean, for me, it was all about the technology, uh, you know, be, being able to translate to, uh, you know, laymen at home what was going on on the race course and see visually who was winning and, and why, yeah. and then see the speed difference between the boats and see the changes they made during the course of the regatta to ultimately come out with a winner. I thought it was really cool. Did you watch any of the sailing, Anthony? I caught highlights of it uh, on the news and stuff. And, uh, of course, 
the biggest uh, thing that you got out of the highlights was the underdog, you know, and then how they slowly and surely creeped up and became, you know, the champions, which was just unbelievable. By changing their way of thinking and, and, and everything else. And like Simon was saying, using data effectively, which if you go back to it now, if you think about something like that, as it relates to the possibilities with the Internet of Things, you know, being able to use big data and, and use it for decision support and its ability to affect everything in your life, anything that's IP addressable, you know, unbelievable. Anything else, um, Simon, that you feel that was sort of a highlight of this year, maybe a surprise, maybe something about that, that doesn't necessarily belong to the IT world? So it, it, it was a surprise. Again, it goes back to, to cars. So my, my buddy has a What Tesla. car do you drive, by the way? What, what, what I, I have a you? Lotus. I have a Lotus Esprit. Ooh. And, and your so friend I, has a Tesla. He has a Tesla. And so, so I just wanted to go in it just to see what it was like to be in a quiet car. That was kind of my thinking. Uh, but it completely changed my view of, of that vehicle and what they're doing there. Wow. Uh, you know, from a space perspective, there's a front boot and a back boot or trunk or whatever you call them over here. Um, so tons of storage space. Uh, the UI inside the car is amazing because there's a 20 inch screen in which you control everything. Opening the sunroof, what directions you're going to go, um, you know, how much energy there is left in the vehicle. And then, you know, the quiet, the, the, the kind of simple pace of the vehicle. I mean, it, it's pretty much as fast as the Lotus because the electric motors are very, very high torque. Uh, pretty much as fast, but just very quiet. So the the UI was just incredible. Unlike your office. <laughs> okay. So I always wanted to go in one. I, I have to get down and try one just to see what it's you, like. You have to. You have to. I mean, it's it's amazing. The the same kind of Apple esque UI. You know, of like picking the color, which by the way is color matched to your car. Pick the sunroof, and then it comes up with a big picture of the sunroof. Drag it back, and then it just opens for you. I mean, it's it's a very very nice way of driving an interaction and an experience with the vehicle. Cool. So, uh, Anthony, other than yes. IT, what what excited you this year? Hmm. Other than IT, well, I've been really paying a lot of attention to IT lately. But I will say, I don't know. I don't, I don't think I have another life besides IT. Then I'll let you off the hook and <laughs> let, let's, let's start to talk about next year. Predicting the future is always fun because it's so easy to do. Um, what, do you see any big changes? Do you see any strong continuation? Is mobility dead? Is big data finally here? Do you see any um, radical change out there? No, mobility is going to, uh, uh, the need for it is going to increase. Uh, big data, the need for it is going to increase. One, uh, one of the things that relates to IT that really excites me, I got a chance to uh, play with Google Glass, and the possibilities of using technology like that is just unbelievable in the future. Like I said, when you start thinking about connectivity and the interacting with people and experiences and, and, and so forth, and uh, one of the cool features that I really liked on the new version was the ability to use the glass to translate anything that you see. So if you saw something in Chinese, it translates into English or whatever language. So no matter where you are in the world, you're able to collaborate and communicate with people and, and, and so forth. So, you know, I think technology is so coming so closely entwined with our lives. So when you ask me what's outside the technology, technology today is you no, know, it's uh, controlling everything. And, and, and I think um, our perspectives are related to user experience, service management, and, and, and so forth are, going, are starting to change, and they will change in the future. Simon, any major shifts in the coming months? So, no, I, you know, major shifts, no. I think I, I see a lot of resistance to change. I think that things should change faster than they probably will. Uh, you know the, the costs of of active of transactions of UI and so on should be plummeting. I mean Moore's law would, alone would suggest that they should be plummeting, and they really haven't um, at an average street price. I mean there are there are standouts there. You know Amazon uh, presented its 30th cost reduction since 2006. Um, but the interesting thing was that 
the price got so low that the 50% reduction they presented for a mid-sized company doing 10 to 20 million puts and gets a month was going to reduce the price from $30 a month to $20 a month. I mean, really not moving the needle. So I, I, I think that um, there'll be resistance to change from corporate IT. Mm. Uh, I think that the business will push harder uh, and, and ultimately cut out parts of IT if IT doesn't kind of get on the bandwagon and figure out how to add more value. But I, I do think that small data is also going to show its head. And what do I mean by that? B big data is kind of IT in its classic form, right? You know, if we spend more money, we can gather a whole bunch of data. We don't know what it means. We'll play around for it, for it, with it for a while and present you something that, that you can go test. I, I'd, I'd like to suggest that um, being able to get the right data, small amounts of the right data, will actually allow customers to make decisions quickly and better uh, I think the gamification could show up as part of that, the, you know, changing the behavior of people to actually get the data, make sure it's accurate, and then use it appropriately. That, that could be a game changer. And, you, know, you can have as much big data as you like, but if you don't have good quality data and if you don't understand what it means, it's really kind of useless. But I do see people starting to focus a lot more on culture and organizational change which bodes very well for some of the work we've already done with you know, best practices and automation and so on. Yeah, when you think, when you think about data, Alf, you always have to think about what really happens with data as you think about things like the DIKW model. Data gets transformed from information to knowledge to decision support. If it's not used for decision support, what good is it? So, it's a waste. So the assignment's point with little data, you know, giving quicker decisions, you know, using the right data, and getting rid of all the noise, uh, it, it's a good thing. So, from big data to small data, and then Anthony, behind you, to your left, to my <laughs> right, is a samurai sword, isn't it? Tell, tell us, you have a handful of swords. How many do you have? Uh, I don't know. I haven't counted them, but uh, up to you. <laughs> I, I have one that you may like right here. It's not a samurai sword, but it's a a knife you may like. You like this one? I like this a lot. You should. I, I use it for uh, shaving sometimes. <laughs> and Anthony, you you may be off in Houston and out of sword's reach, but I can get you with my boomerang, and then it will come back to me, and I can attack you. Well, Simon, that's that's why I have the 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 boomerang knife. This one is directly used for boomerang, so knock them out of the air. It's an anti-boomerang device. <laughs> a boomerang-seeking sword. Um, and then after I knock it out the air, I send this one back to you. What is it? You hold it higher. Sort of like a boomerang, <laughs> but I, I don't expect it to return. <laughs> oh, what are those? I, I, oh. I thought that was for trimming Cat5 cables. Yeah. So, Simon, what are you going to do for Christmas? For Christmas. So, in reality, uh, I am going to eat as much turkey and Christmas pudding as I can. Excellent choice. Excellent choice. I like it. I like it a lot. Yeah. <clears throat> and you, Anthony, any big plans going to Hawaii, staying home, mowing the lawn? No, but I'm trying to do nothing. Oh. That's hard. <laughs> No, I, I agree, I agree, I agree. Yeah, we have uh, our household of four is going to grow to a household of, well, for Christmas Eve, it's going to be close to 16, but we're going to have 11 people staying here with a dog and a cat uh, from different parts of the world. So uh, I'm going to go rest now. <laughs> do, 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 do you have snow over there yet, Alf? I'm, I'm yes. trying to figure out. Oh, you do? Yes. Uh, got I, I was worried that there's going to be no skiing this year. No, we got a good dump, and they, on heavenly, they've done a really good job uh, building up man-made snow, which is better than people expect. Uh, it's still quite clustered, and so many of the locals don't agree. But the, the snow will come eventually. We seldom have a good, snow, a lot of snow before Christmas. Uh, we have enough to make it pretty. And that's all I'm hoping for. Hey, hey Alf, I think you need to tell people where you live. At. I live in Tahoe, in the Sierras. Yes, you should come here. We need your money. With the 70-degree heat or not? 
No. <laughs> No, but we, we have it. For example, that's the problem. That's what we're losing on the snow. It's 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 going to be 50 degrees in sunshine today. So it's it's crazy. But then again, we had 15 the other day. So anyway, it was good seeing you guys. Merry Christmas to both of you. Merry Christmas to one and all. Merry Christmas and happy holidays. For the rest of you out there, stay safe. Bye bye.